The last thing we're going to do is we're going, going to create a user interface so we can access the different queries and forms that we've got. So we click on create, then we go to form design. Now we've got a, a blank form here. And on here now we can create different buttons to navigate our way to the different types of forms and queries that we've got. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to access the student details form. So we can click on this icon here, which is a button. We can drag this open. And then we can click on form operation. And we can click on open form. <coughs> Next. And we can see what form we want to open. So I want to open the student details form. And then we can choose from two different options. We can either open the form and find specific data, or we can open the form and show all records. We'll stick with the second option for now. Click on Next. And then we can either have a picture like this, or we can have text. I'm going to keep it as text at the moment. So we can put in something like, add or edit student, click okay, on next, and then finish. Then we can do the same for instructor, and we can al also do the same for entering in a new booking. So for new booking, form operations, open form, so we need to make sure we open our form with our subform. So we had called it table student. We can click on next. So this is our form with our subform form in it. So we need to make sure we're opening up the right form here. Click on next. And we can type in something like create new lesson or create new booking, click on finish. So we've now got our options for our forms. So what we need to do now is we need to do some options for our queries. You can either do this by having a query button here and then having another form or you could create all your query options on this form. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a query, a query button which will take us to a, a query form. However, as we haven't created the form yet, we need to create the form first. So we can save this as main menu. And we can also now create another form. And we can call this queries. And we can make this slightly bigger. And we can add some queries on here. So for example, I can click on button. And I can click on run query from miscellaneous. Click on next. And we can click on the first one, find a specific student details lesson, click on next. And the text we can have is find a student. And we can click on finish. And this will be our query for find a student. Our next query, again we can open up a, look, a button. Click on miscellaneous, go to run query, 
click on next and for this instance we can type in query by date and we can click on next and we can click on find lesson by date can click on finish and then the last one we're going to add Again, click on miscellaneous, go to run, go to run query, and for this instance, we want to click on student details. Click on next. Find student details, and we can click on finish. These two queries might get mixed up, so you need to make sure that you clearly differentiate between the two. We can just line these up. We can also add a title at the top here, so we could add perhaps a label. call this queries menu and now you can also style this as well if you wish to do so we can click on the format menu and then highlight this we can change the font size we can center this we can perhaps change the font style if you wish to do so and you could also perhaps add in a little logo if you wish to do so by clicking on this icon here where we can do an image so we're going to go back to our main menu and here we're going to open up another button called queries menu so again we can go to button we can select from this menu open form and we want to open up our queries form click on next we can call it open queries menu and click on finish this will open up our queries menu we can also now put in a label at the top here and we can call this main menu again we can click on format and we should be able to change the size of this we can just click off it, click back on it if it doesn't work, highlight it and then you can change this choose perhaps a different font style and we can also add perhaps we wanted to a picture in here but we're going to leave that for now and that should be our main menu complete So the last thing we're going to do now is we're going to create a password screen so we can put some kind of security on our database. So again we need to create a form and we can perhaps just increase this in size. We can put a label at the top and call this login and again we can change the size of the font I've called it login, perhaps you can call it whatever appropriate name you want the next thing we need to do is, <coughs> is 
is add in a text box which is this one here so we want one for our username and we also want one for our password let's rename these so we know what we're dealing with so on the first one we can call this username and for this text box we can call this password you can also label this here call this username and we can call this password we then need to create a button which will help us log in and we can create a button which will also help us cancel so we can cancel this operation when this comes up and we can rename this to login and we can rename this one to cancel should also give this uh, a form an appropriate name so we can call this login form click on OK so now we have our form set up the next thing we need to do is we need to access the Visual Basic code in order to enter in our code so we can right click on the login button then we can click on build event and we can go straight to code builder and then click on OK and this will get up our screen at the moment you can see that the button that we've clicked on is called command 5 so we should perhaps go back and give it a more appropriate name so we can change this to login button and if we right click again on this and click on build event and we can see now we've got our login button here so we know our code has to go in between where it says private sub login button underscore click and end sub underscore click is our event so this event will take place when we click on the button called login button I have now typed the code in this is how the code works if password equals 1234 password refer refers to our text box which we call password and username equals admin and username refers to the text box which we called username then do command open form this is the name of our form main menu which we wish to open else otherwise if this is not the case then we'll have a message box which appears which says password or username is incorrect please try again and then we need to end the if statement that we've started and we also end the sub which we've started here so we can say this yes and then we can go back to our form and test this out click on open and we can type in our username which we set as admin and we can put our password in which we set as 1234 and once we click on login it should take us to our form here now if we go back to our login form and type in incorrect password it should come up with a message box which says password or username is incorrect please try again we've set up our login box now we also want to set up our council box so we can go back to design view we can write, we can click on this and we can call this council button and we can right we can right click on this 
and then go to build event go to code builder click on OK now we should have the code which we can enter in for our council button this is the code we're going to have for our council button so it's based on us clicking the button called council button a message box will appear saying the database is now closing do command save so it will save any changes that have been made do command quit and then it will quit the database so we can save this now and then we can go back to our database we can go to open and we can click on cancel the database is now closing and once I click on this it should cancel the database now there's a couple more things we need to do once we enter in our password here we want to ensure that it comes up as stars instead of it showing up so we can right click on this go to design view we can select this and from our options here we can go down to data then we can click on input mask and we can select password click finish now if we go back to open and now test this out this should now come up as stars the next thing we need to do is when we open our database we want the login form to be the first form to open so what we need to do is we go to file then options then we click on current database then we go to display form and we select our login form and we click on OK and now when we open our database this will now open the login form as our first form